Hey guys, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Sam and this is my channel where we talk about all things plants and plant related. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for coming back. So today we're gonna do a little bit of a different video than I typically do on my channel. It's gonna be rather vlog style. And yeah, I just have a few things I wanted to share with you guys. So without further ado, let's get right into it. guys so today I pretty much I have a few things I want to talk about so I want to go over and kind of show you guys a couple little projects that I have worked on and done within the last couple weeks um, I want to give you guys a little bit of a plant update on a few of my plants um, let's see I want to talk about a little bit of an issue if you will that I've been struggling with, something that's been causing me a lot of stress recently until I figured out what it was. So we will get into that as well. Yeah, so let's jump into it. So first off, I wanna talk about a little bit of an issue that I've been having, as I mentioned. My philodendron gloriosum was putting off a new leaf and it had been doing so for over a month. It was taking a very long time for this particular leaf to unfurl. I was like, eh, it's fall, you know, it's just going to take a little bit longer because a lot of my other plants are doing the same thing. But this leaf finally unfurled, like last week, I think, and I noticed that it was very, very severely damaged. The leaf was just, I will insert a picture. It was awful. It looked terrible. It was completely yellow. And wrinkled and it just looked so bad and I immediately gasped and I started running around and checking my plants I picked the gloriosum up and I was checking the pot and I noticed these little tiny itty bitty odd looking bugs crawling all over my pots so when I say crawling all over my pots I don't mean there was like 50 on each pot there was probably three to four on each plant pot literally in on most of the pots in my collection mostly the terracotta pots oddly enough and I didn't know what they were. I had never seen them before. I initially thought thrips because I have I haven't had those in my home. Thank goodness. Hope I don't. But I have seen those like in big box stores crawling around on things like the philodendron, uh, lickety split, and palms, um, and bird of paradise, different plants. Um, and they're so they're pretty easy to identify. But I'd never had them in my home. And these particular bugs were kind of the same shape as a thrip, but they were smaller. So they're kind of, they're very, very tiny and oblong. Um, they're long and skinny, basically, and they move kind of fast. Um, so I was just kind of at a loss. I was like, oh my goodness, why are these thrips or whatever they are on every single one of my plant pots just about? The thing was, it wasn't just the plant pots in one particular area. It was plants that were scattered in completely different areas. Um, so I was like, that is so weird. Anyway, so I took to Instagram and completely flipped out in panic asking for help. And I have to say a huge shout out and thank you so much to Pam from Pam's Pretty Plants because she seen my post and she reached out and asked me to send her some pictures of the bugs in question and so I did and she was able to identify um, that the bugs were not actually a houseplant pest, but rather springtails. So basically what springtails are, they're not your typical houseplant pest. They don't really cause a lot of harm to your plants. Um, they can like nibble around on some roots, but they're mostly attractive. They're mostly interested in eating like organic soil matter or fungus that may be in your organic compost um, or like dead or decaying leaves or stems or roots things like that and they're attracted to moisture so I am I I made a video on the soil that I mixed up and I used a lot of cocoa core I used a lot of worm castings and just some really organic uh, 
organic stuff and that's what they're attracted to as well organic compost and um, I didn't use as much perlite as I normally would because I was kind of hoping I made an airy soil but I also made a soil that retained a little bit more moisture because I didn't want to be watering as frequently as I had been that was a mistake never again so they are coming in because they're attracted to the moisture basically that's being held in my plants uh, and yeah I just kind of got an infestation of them so I was relieved because I know that they're not going to cause a ton of damage to my plants, but I was still kind of stressed out because I have bugs in my house. Um, so I guess pretty much the key to getting rid of them is just let your plants dry out. And I'm going to be changing the soil in. I'm going to use pretty much the same soil mix with a little bit less worm castings because I think I used too much this last time. And I'm going to add a lot, lot, lot more perlite. And I am going to be repotting a lot of those plants that are in that soil. And I'm going to be letting my plants dry out a lot more, the ones who can tolerate it anyway. So I will also try to include a couple shots or pictures of what a springtail looks like um, if you've never seen one before because I hadn't. So I will definitely try to include that in this video. I couldn't get a very good picture myself, but there's plenty on the internet, so I'm sure I can find something to share with you guys. So I have not figured out what the cause of the leaf damage on my Gloriosum is. It is pushing out another new leaf, so I guess time will tell if that one's going to be destroyed as well. I had to remove the damaged leaf. It was so bad, but I did purchase some new grow lights a couple weeks back, and I'm just kind of experimenting with them. Um, and I have them up here. I will show those to you later in the video, but I do have them a couple feet back away from my Gloriosum and my other rare plants because I didn't know how hot they would get and I just kind of wanted to experiment before I just put them right on my plants. So I don't really know if, if it could have been heat from the grow light. I'm not really sure what is going on, but I did, it was, it was a huge scare. I freaked out. I thought I was going to lose all of my plants because my mind went to, when I, I immediately figured out it wasn't thrips and my mind by watching Plants, Pots, and Whatnots, Nikki. So thank you, Nikki, for doing that thrift video when you did. You're awesome, girl. But, um, so I immediately went to aphids, root aphids, because there is no insects on my leaves. Um, I don't think I have aphids. I don't think I have root aphids. I can't find any. Um, my other plants are doing fine, but it did scare me enough to where I am treating my plants. Um, and I will share with you the products that I am using to do so. Um, so I'm using diatomaceous earth to put in my soil, and I also got uh, kind of an organic type of pesticide that I have been using all week. I've just kind of been hauling plants into my bathtub and spraying them all down really well. And I figured in the next couple of weeks, if I do not, or if I do happen to see more damage on my plants or I find any pests, I'm going to go ahead, no more playing around, and I'm going to order some beneficial insects, some predator insects. So everyone has been raving about them and they've talked me into it. So I don't know if I'll get like the green lace wings or another type, but that is next on my list. We're not going to be dealing with pest outbreaks. I'm just not doing it. So anyways, on to the next. Um, I have some notes here so I don't lose track of what I want to talk about. So, um, I'm sure you guys watch Becca from Becca de, la, de, de la, la, Becca de la Plants. And a week or so ago, she put out a video making the most adorable little trellis for her Hoya macrophylla. And she actually used bamboo stakes that she ordered on Amazon, but I just ran out to Walmart and I picked up these little wooden dowels. They're not bamboo, which I would prefer, but it's fine. And I just kind of snapped them for the sizes I needed, and I made two of them for two of my Hoyas. So this one was actually on this metal type of trellis that I made. It wasn't initially a trellis, um, but it didn't look very good, and... I just didn't like it. I ended up putting that in my Monstera Stiltipacana. So yeah, I just used those little wooden dowels and some twine. 
and it's not the prettiest the twines kind of all over the place I did not have a hot glue gun so I did not use glue just the twine and the wooden dowels but I think they turned out really nice and I really really like them I love I love the look of my Hoya on these so I think it's safe to say I'm gonna be making more for more of my plants particularly my Hoya and I just wanted to share these with you guys because I think it's so cute. Since I added this poop calyx on the other trellis I had, it put out so, so many new leaves. Like, it's crazy. All of this is new growth. These tendrils were completely bare other than down in the pot, and they've completely filled out. And there's still lots of new growth going on. So, yeah, I think they turned out really nice. So I would definitely encourage you to go check out Becca's video on this if you're interested in making some little plant trellis for your plants. Um, they're very, it's very inexpensive. I think I paid like a buck for a pack of these little wooden dowels and you can get three trellises out of the pack. And then the twine's like a dollar or two for a giant roll that I've been using to make several moss poles. I've used it for so many different things. To tie plants to the moss poles, like, yeah, you really can't go wrong. And then I just have a couple little clips here clipping this guy on um, and if you see white powder like this on my plants do not fret it's not a pest that is just the diatomaceous earth so I went ahead and, and I went around and put a few scoops of diatomaceous earth in a bunch of my plants on top of the soil and I just haven't watered it down in yet so as I go around you may see that white powder on some of my plants um, I, I just need to go around and kind of mix it into the soil and the reason I haven't watered it in yet is because I'm trying to allow my plants uh, the time to dry out completely, like as much time as possible because I'm trying to uh, eradicate those springtails and get them out of here because they're not welcome here. Like I get they're not really hurting my plants, but I don't want them in my house, period.com. So when it comes time to water, I will water the diatomaceous earth down to the soil of the plants but I just thought that was really cute and I want to share it with you guys and then a little update for my two plants that are, were struggling with root rot that I you know I removed the roots and I put them in water and I've still not had the best of luck um, with the water method this time of year so a couple of you recommended that I try using sphagnum moss, that it's a lot safer in terms of avoiding root rot, and, or avoiding stem rot, my bad, and that it's a lot faster. So I had never rooted with sphagnum moss before, so I was a little bit nervous to go there. I'd only ever used water, but I decided to give it a try, and I did it. So I ordered another brick of sphagnum moss, and... So here's my philodendron painted lady, took her out of the water and I put her in the sphagnum moss in this mason jar, glass mason jar, and the moss is just kind of moist, a little bit damp, it's not soggy, um, I didn't drench it or anything like that. And if I notice that the moss is starting to dry out, I'll just take my spray bottle and um, mist it a little bit and make it a little moist again and yeah. But they've been in this sphagnum moss for about three days now. so. Um, time will tell. I'm really hopeful. And then I did the same with my pink princess, but uh, I'm kind of thinking about grabbing another mason jar and transferring this one to the mason jar as well because I just think it would be better to like kind of hold in the moisture and the humidity around the roots. But it's in a plastic nursery pot with holes in the bottom. And then I did the same thing with the spag moss. Oh, the camera's over here. Sorry. So far, it's doing okay. And then I just kind of have it sitting in this little plastic bag, because I don't know, I thought maybe that would increase the humidity um, down here to go up in the bottom of the pot around the roots. But I mean, I don't know if that's, in, if I just made that up or what, but, and then I just have it sitting in here as well, a little cool whip container. But I'll definitely keep you guys updated and let you know if we get roots on how they do. I'm not gonna be like pulling them out of the sphagnum moss um, to check the roots for probably at least three weeks to a month because I don't want to disturb them anymore. They've been through enough um, unless I see significant damage to the plants themselves like the leaves or the stems getting soft or mushy 
or you know anything like that if I see signs of rot then I will obviously remove them and I don't know where I'll go from there but um, if I did this wrong uh, and you guys like know what you're doing when it comes to rooting in sphag moss please let me know because I am like I said new to this method of rooting so let me know if you think I did a good job let me know if you think I should transfer the pink princess blah, princess into a glass container or maybe if I should put it in the sphagnum moss in like a baggie a ceram or ceramic ceramic saran wrap or something if you think that would work better yeah, but I have them setting over next to my humidifier, so it's pretty humid over there. And I wanted to share that little update with you guys. And yeah, so I'm just going to take you guys around and show you a little bit of the things that I've been talking about. Um, we're going to bottom water a couple plants. And yeah, I hope you enjoy this vlog style type video. Um, I do have a plant haul coming up. It should be up this coming weekend. Um, I have a few pretty cool plants that I've gotten over the last couple months that you guys actually have not seen. So I haven't showed them on my channel yet. So I'm really excited to share those with you. So if you're interested in seeing those cool plants that I've added to my collection in the last couple months, then stay on the lookout for that. But let's get right into the rest of the video. And thank you guys so much for watching. So I moved my Hoyas over here because it gets um, some good direct light. It's not too harsh though throughout the day and my Hoya really liked that. So yeah, I had my Peperomia and things like that over here and they really don't need that much bright light. So I just kind of swapped them out and here they are. I love this one. Look at those leaves. Look at those leaves. My princess. Oh Daddy. no, wait, right here's my princess. So, yeah, I think they'll like it a lot better over here. And then, a couple months back, I did a video where I put some of my plants up on a trellis, and this Scandapsis pictus was one of them. And she got so long, guys. Oh my gosh, it's crazy. So long, it's insane. So this is just kind of temporary, but I wanted to take her off the trellis. She actually just outgrew it. And this is what I've done with her. Okay, so this is actually a baby from my giant Skindapsis Pictus. Um, I took this as three itty bitty cuttings. Um, they only had a couple leaves on them each. And it is just, I water propagated it. And it has just grown so much, guys. Like, you have no idea how short this was. It was barely even hanging over the side of the pot. Um, those two leaves there are brand new. They popped up, well, they're not brand new, but they popped up recently over the last month. And it's just growing so well, and I love its setting right here. I think it looks so, so cute cascading down this little wooden thingamajig that I've gotten set in here. I've just got, like, my fertilizers, neem oil, mist bottle, activated charcoal, and things like that in it. And I just think it looks so cute. Sitting in that little cash po. <laughs> to show you really quick I never did figure out what exactly is going on with this leaf but I do not think it's a fungus or anything it doesn't seem to be spreading um, and this is on my pa pastazanium or pastazanum philodendron pastazanum but look check out this cutie this is a new leaf so I was really nervous when I seen this pop out that um, it was going to be damaged like my gloriosum was 
Um, so I'm like really keeping an eye on it and it looks okay, but I don't know. Um, I'll definitely be posting pictures of it once it unfurls on Instagram. So wish me luck that it's happy and healthy. And then this leaf is still um, trying to pop out here on my Melanocrys and Varicosum. So yeah, I just wanted to share that new growth with you because I'm really excited to see this new leaf. Ah, it looks like it's going to be a pretty good size. So fingers crossed it's not damaged. This new leaf is finally starting to unfurl. It looks like it might be a half moon on my um, Syngonium Albo variegatum. And then if you look right here, coming out of that same stem, there is another beautiful looking variegated leaf popping out. It looks like it has a good bit of white on it. So this plant is just absolutely incredible, guys. I am so in love with this variegated Syngonium. Oh, she's so beautiful. if it's incredibly backlit but these are my new grow lights that I'm trying out this winter uh, I'm really new to grow lights I didn't have any last year I didn't really I didn't have this many plants so I didn't really need them so much but <clears throat> I got these on Amazon uh, I'll leave the the brand name and all of that on the screen and in the description but these were right around $50 and so far I really like them. I don't know if this is what has caused the damage on my new Gloriosum leaf. I'm really not sure, but it has one, <clears throat> two, three, four, four different levels of brightness. Um, it has a timer so you can do 12 hours, 6 hours, and 3 hours and the time that you turn it on, so if you're, say for instance if I turn this on at 7 a.m. for 12 hours, it'll, it'll stay on and it'll kick off at 7 p.m. and then it will kick back on at 7 a.m. the following morning until you change that. So that's really cool. Um, this is the, just an option to turn one of the lights off. Sorry, I know that's bright. They have the gooseneck, so you can literally turn them any way that you would like. And yeah, I think they're really cool. So, and this shelf right here really isn't getting a ton of light this time of year, so plus we have daylight savings, and it just kind of sucks for our plants. I do plan on purchasing um, another one of these, at least one, maybe two this year. Um, and I would like to try out some different brands. I can't afford to go spend $300 on grow lights. So yeah, for 50 bucks, I'm pretty impressed and I'm, I'm digging it. I think my plants are really, really liking these lights so far. So, Okay friends, that is all I have today for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you have any tips for anything that I've mentioned um, or any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I truly, truly love talking to you guys in the comments and it's just, it's great. 
So yeah, like I said, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you guys very soon in my upcoming plant haul. Bye guys.